Hello, following on from the last part, we're now going to work on the gun's main body, starting with a few bits of cleaning up. Uh, you can see around uh, this area where we did the booleans uh, that we've got quite a bit of bad topology. And yeah, we're just going to sort that out, just because it will help uh, speed things up in the future. Do want to keep these edges in there though because they will catch highlights uh, when we use the bevel shader later on. And just want to add some loop cuts here in the front. Uh, if I had two, uh, it splits it into thirds obviously. Um, and I'm going to use that as markers for uh, marking out where I put the barrels. Uh, I'm just going to delete these faces that go across here. In fact, I think what I want to do is I need to separate these, uh, the smaller part from the from the two end parts. So if I go in there, selection, and separate by selection, I can then hide that middle part. Uh, I need to delete the floor, uh, delete the, the bottom plane, I should say. And if I bridge this across, and then grid fill, grid fill on that part, it's just going to make the whole the whole thing easier to work with. Uh, I'm going to do the same here. Just going to bridge this across, and then uh, fill that bottom face in, because that's got the boolean cut out of it as well at the back. So I don't want. Um, I don't want to just bridge that because it will just cut across and it won't make any sense. Uh, but if I use a just an end gone for now, just to fill it in. Okay, and now I just want to look around the model and see how I want to refine this shape uh, into, into the gun. Uh, if you remember from the reference, there were a few that were kind of vertically aligned. So you had two bar a couple of barrels and they was aligned vertically. Um, I'm probably going to go for that design. Um, as you can see on the, the original block outs, I had a sort of vertical design going on as well. So to start with, I'm going to add in a cube and I'm going to snap that to the bottom third uh, that we've marked out on the front there. I'm going to chamfer that front corner off, also to a third, because it will clamp to that where that edge loop is. And I'm just going to resize, uh, resize this cube uh, into what I want. Make it narrower and taller. And the original box that was the uh, sort of block out for the gun is going to um, basically become like a shell that goes around the, the part that actually fires that holds the gun barrels. Gonna select all these uh, edges around the corners of this box, and I'm just gonna uh, bevel those. Got quite a few segments. I always try and keep the segments uh, on an even number, um, which makes sense for low polying. When you take out every other loop, you've still got the, the two that may, that support the sides. Something I hadn't really thought about, but I, I picked that up from Josh Gambrell of Blender Bros. Um, just, just makes sense to do it that way. And sort of having someone point it out specifically is like, oh yeah, of course it does. Um, they're just going to join these across, just so I can work on the, the middle of these faces. Just going to mirror it on the wire, just so the back, back half of this is the same. Just saves me having to fix up the topology both sides. 
for now anyway. And then we want a loop cut through each of these, and that's going to be the middle of each barrel. Just going to shade all this move on that. <coughs> uh, so I'm going to boot in away part at the back of this shape. And that's going to be at 30 degrees, which has been the angle we've, we've been using throughout. If I select both of these objects, I'm going to edit mode on both of them. I can select the cube with select linked. And then if I make that edge there the last active element, I can snap that to exactly where I want it to boot it away from. Um, I'm going to side orthographic. And again, if I select all both the cube and the back edges on that part, I can bring it back. I just want to leave a tiny gap there from the side view between that and the main bracket body. Just move that cube up a little bit so it's not hotlining. Hotlining is when the Boolean overlaps um, with an edge perfectly. And so it sort of usually it usually creates problems. Um, there were some <coughs> excuse me, there were some in the previous video. Uh, when trying to cut the bracket away from the body. Just going to add a chamfer around the front of this, uh, I don't know what you'd call it, the, the barrel mount or the barrel surround. I want that to be quite thick because I want it to be quite noticeable. Going to add in the cylinders for the barrel now. I'm going to leave those at 32. Shade auto smooth flat. And then just snap them to that vert. Rotate on the X 90 degrees and then just scale them down. <clears throat> so what, what I'm going to do is I'm going to have two barrels uh, at these points and I want them to be flush with this face on the, um, the barrel mount or whatever you want to call it. Um, but they are going to be separate objects within their respective um, parts, and they're going to have um, different materials, and they're going to catch uh, highlights from the bevel shader as well. Just going to delete the back of those because uh, they'll never be seen. Just going to quickly merge all the verts. Select both of these. And then we're going to duplicate them. Shift D, right click. Separate by selection. And then we're going to select those. Flip the faces because they're now sitting within those holes as cylinders. Select those faces and inset them. And then just extrude them back. And there is a bit of uh, fighting on the surfaces there for which it uh, displays and it's just because they're sitting on the same plane as the as the the main gun body at the back just going to give these a chamfer uh, sorry a, a bevel just say so look like they sit within there a little bit a little bit better Okay, we need to work on the um, this part that's uh, holding it now. We probably need to bevel these uh, corners. Uh, but before I do that, I want to add in a couple of loop cuts. Again, to sort of be a thirds marker across the breadth of the top part. You can use um, loop cuts a few different ways. You can use them to mark things that you want to snap to. You can use them for um, things you want to clamp to. Um, this one probably won't work 100% because it's going to clamp to 
that vert at the back before it reaches that thirds marker anyway because it goes up at a strange angle but to be fair that's that's probably big enough for that bevel just going to merge the verts you can see it removed two that's that's where it's joining that part of the back uh, yeah that that works pretty well to be honest I've got a few topology issues here. Oh, it's where I've um, I basically removed the center line. It removed the one for this loop, which is curved. So I'm going to need nail tools edge curve plus to put that back in. What it does is it keeps the shape. It's kind of like this. Uh, if you've ever used 3ds Max, it's like set flow. Um, so it kind of keeps the curvature. It works it out with the average somehow. I'm not a maths genius, so I couldn't tell you the exact maths behind it, but it averages out the surrounding geometry. Just could do a little bit of topology cleanup here. Just so we don't have any odd things happening while we're working on it. Okay, that's uh, that's okay for that outer form of that part. Just gonna save that. And then what I want to do is I'm going to use these front faces, uh, duplicate and separate. And I'm just gonna clean up the geometry on them a little bit. And then just extrude that. And I'm just basically going to use this as a cutter object to push back into this body. And if I just scale that down, make it smaller, I just want a little bit of an overhang over the, um, the barrel surround. Just to be pushed back a little bit into there. just to emphasize that that is more of an outer shell part. And if you remember, we did this with the, um, the grill in the, in the base bracket. Uh, we just used the uh, existing geometry to create a cutter that's about the right, that's kind of in the right place already. Uh, just adding a loop cut there on the main gun body and with E you can make it um, even to whichever side you want so the front of it I wanted it um, to be even with the front of the gun um, because I can then duplicate the, that row of that ring of faces and we're just going to create another cutter out of this object uh, to use as a slice operation so we're going to slice off the front um, end of this this um, of the main body Going to extrude these across, snapping them to each vert, merge the verts, and then do the same. Uh, just going to fix up the top part, bridge that across, and then those bits can just be filled with an end gone for now. Same on the back, just extrude across, snap, extrude, snap, extrude, snap. Merge by distance, bridge these. And then just fit in the holes with an end gone. Right click in, right click in. Okay, now I want the I want to scale this, but I want to scale it from a specific place, which is the middle of this ring. So I've got um, quick origin set to Alt S. I've just snapped that into there, and I'm just scaling it up. Just going to put shade small auto smooth on, and then I'm just going to use a Slice um, slice brush to basically cut that exact same shape through the whole of that body, and I want it to make sure it's back further than that that first inset that I've done. So I'm just going to apply that on both, and that gets rid of the cutter. Okay, and you can see the topology on this is really bad. It's not not going well at all. So we can work on fixing that up. 
which you don't have to do, um, but if you want to add any more details, which I do, um, it does help to get that done. I've got three extroverts here for no apparent reason. Another couple here. So we want to keep the one that's supporting the, the edges to get rid of those two. Just joining all these verts back up. Move those across. Just snap them to those and then merge. I think they merge down the bottom as well. Yep. Never hurts to just grab a vert and slide it around just to check what it's connected to. Uh, you can sometimes find where you've got gaps in your mesh. Generally, you want to keep all your objects watertight so there's no holes in them um, obviously I didn't do that with the barrels of the gun but that's because they're kind of inside the mesh where you'll never see them you also want to do that if you're I think you have to do that if you're making a model that's going to be for 3d printing unless you make it two-sided of course which again it did some thickness with a probably a shell modifier or solidify. Uh, yeah, shell is uh, 3ds Max, solidify is Blender. And just fixing up the topology on the body. Okay, so I quite like that. That's um, again, there'll be some material separation there. That the front, the back part could be sort of like a, a dark blue, and the front bit could be like a light grey. So it looks a little bit more fitted together. Uh, now what I want to do here as well is the front part, I want to basically have it have a little latch that extends back into the body. And to do that, I want to I basically need to inset both parts equally, which is why I'm selecting them separately like that, and then I'm going to select both in edit mode, and then I can go into edit mode on both and inset them. Uh, just toying with the idea of chamfering that. Hmm. I'm not sure I need that because, yeah, I don't think I need that. Um, the, um, the bevel shader will catch a highlight there anyway, and it will probably be um, it'll probably be enough. So yeah, um, back to the uh, original idea I was talking about. I want to inset those faces, but I also want to inset these faces by the exact same amount. So I'm just going to select both individually then select both objects and edit mode them at the same time. And I just want to inset both dots. That's it. Okay. Let's find that bit bigger. And that, then what I want to do is have um, a bit extend off of this one and sort of slot into a hole for it on the other one. And to do that, I'm going to use a Boolean. You can extrude it, but in this instance, because I want to cut away from one and join to the other, I'm just going to use a Boolean because then you can just duplicate the Boolean and use the correct operations for what you want. Just going to add a loop cut there, so I can snap it evenly in the middle. Again, just working out the proportions of how to measure this stuff out. And 
I'm just going to give it a bit more of a shape than just what it was. So obviously it's not going to be sticking out like this out of the body. And I'm going to snap that to uh, that that inset we did earlier. Actually, no, I'm not. I'm going to put it um, just there, just within that area, because it will create a support loop. Just going to delete that. Actually, no, just use that as the support loops for the edges. Hmm. Same on this, we're going to need some extra loops on that at some point. Quite close to the front, so just going to snap those. To the same ones on the front. Then we want one around the body, and if we press E for even, we can bring that forwards. So we just bring that to there for now. Then we can use a vertex to snap that forward. And the same again with that one for the front part. So I'm just going to duplicate that. And we're just going to union that into one of them. We can move that on the X, step that to there. Don't actually need that part there, so we can get rid of that and just fix that up. Now there's the culprit. It's just that double vert. Uh, double that there that hasn't merged. We just snap that there and, and merge it together, that should be fine. Okay, I'm just going to connect those diagonally to there. And then on this piece, we want to do the opposite. We want to use a difference, and that will cut out, cut out that shape. And same again. We can just connect up that geometry to the surrounding. And we can see it's not quite merged those verts there, so just need to check what's connected to what there. It's that one again. I think it's the same one on the front. So we just move, snap that to that vert and then merge them. Don't need the cutter anymore. And just have a look, see what that looks like. Mirror both pieces, so we've got it on both sides.
Yeah, I'm just going to snap that bit up there as well because that's not quite in the right place. You just grab them and move them around. You can tell if they're connected to everything around them or not. That one isn't. Move that. If we just pull that face back a bit, uh, that edge back a bit, we can then just connect these uh, diagonally to there. And just gonna check up some, check up, check some of the other ones, just just to make sure. And then just mirror that across. The bevel for this panel line is probably going to be. Uh, it's, it's so small that it's it's not too big a deal with the topology on this part. Um, it will it will still show up fairly well on the normal map, or should do anyway. Just going to mirror that across. And then we've got a piece here that slots in perfectly to the rest of the body. Okay, something else we can do is we can add in another little, um, add a bit of detailing on this. Just going to add in another loop there, just so it doesn't go right way to the end. And if we, ins we can then inset this, and give it some depth. And if we want to, we can also delete an edge or two and just make that an angular, an angular shape. It sort of disappears into the body. And just mirror that across. Uh, this part we kind of need to make this a solid object, so I'm just gonna reach that across and end on both sides just for now. Just remembering to save it because I haven't done that for a while. I would hate to lose it at this stage when I've done a fair bit of work to it. And what I want to do now is I want to cut this front bit that holds the barrels out of these parts of the main gun body. Um, the reason for doing that is because I want them to catch a small highlight where they intersect because they are going to be different materials. Um, and I just want them to catch that highlight. So this is just going to be me fixing up topology um, probably until the end of this video. Um, feel free to skip if you don't want to see that. So I'm just deleting out the barrels and this front bevel because we don't need it. That could just be an end gone. We just need this to basically be a solid shape uh, with the geometry in roughly the same places um, as the part we're cutting it from. And we're going to have to do that twice as well because uh, the other. We're going to need that for the other part as well. So just doing a limit dissolve gets rid of all the. Basically everything except things that are contributing to the silhouette of the shape. So I'm just going to duplicate that one for the other piece and hide it. And then uh, difference booting that away. And you can see where the lines are. Um, are cutting through because obviously that's where it adds the extra geometry. Um, need to apply the boolean to actually go in and start editing them though. And we can just start fixing up the geometry for the rest of this. So 
So I'm just bridging these across. And I just want to make this as solid a shape as possible um, without just adding tons of geometry for the sake of it. Any stray verts that are causing shading issues we want to get rid of. Although much of this is not going to be seen anyway, it's literally just the front face um, that really matters here because that's where the highlights can be caught. When, you, when you're working on this stuff, you can get very lost in thinking about what bits are actually going to be seen. Um, and so it does, you, it will occur to you several times while you're modeling. This bit's not needed at all because you, you can't see it. You can't see the inside topology on this part, unless it's something that falls apart or explodes or breaks apart or uh, you're animating deliberately to do that. Um, then all these inner faces, you're not, never going to see them anyway. Sometimes with weapons in games, they like to sort of explode them into parts um, so that you can see things as attachments and extra upgrades, obviously. But it's quite telling. You'll see on, especially when I do the low poly video, um, that most of this stuff isn't necessary on these. It's, it's purely for is to help with triangulation as well um, because when you go into a game engine everything gets triangulated and you want that to happen in a predictable way uh, so yes the the rest of the video is literally just me fixing up topology um, so feel free to skip to the next video uh, the next video is a few last minute uh, tweaks we need to do uh, and then it will be on to the low poly modeling. So uh, we'll see you there. Thank you for watching. Take care.